Good evening, everybody. I know it's later than normal for my lives, but I have a guest tonight who will be dialing in all the way, dialing in, that's so old fashioned of me, all the way from Texas. And it's brown skinned um, Dr. Adeline Keekham, who I met only recently on a live, well, digitally met on a live for the English talking about hyaluronic acid and we just hit it off. And I just think she's really interesting. I absolutely love her feed. I love all of her content. I think she's gonna bring something really unique to this conversation about 10 best beauty buys. And she's also doing me a favor because I know for a fact that she is a clinical dermatologist who's in practice and is probably taking an hour off from her patients, I think, <laughs> just to spend some time with us. So uh, we owe her a lot. I'm going to um, invite her in. Let's have a look. Where are you? Let's have a look. You should come up straight away. There you are. Come in, Adeline. Let me know if you can see that and come in. I also adore her name. Hello. Hey, Nadine. How are you? I am so, so good and super excited to be joining you today. And I was just saying to everybody that essentially, I know it's your last day in practice before the long weekend. So I have a sneaking suspicion we might have snuck in on one of your appointments. So oh no, thank you. I am free. I'm all yours today. Well, thank you so much. I was also explaining to people two things. One, I feel like we have met each other, obviously, because I follow you, but we actually only sort of digitally met recently because we did a live about hyaluronic acid. Yes. Cancer. And I, I found out about you and my little cousin came in. You did a live with Nadine. Are you serious? <laughs> and I'm like, okay. <laughs> Well, it's really interesting because the whole point, when I came up with this concept about just inviting people on who I really admire and whose opinions I respect in lockdown, I didn't realize that A, it made me the laziest person in the world because you guys are going to do all the work for me, but also it allowed me to speak to people I admire, speak to people I respect, speak to people who have different experience, different skin types, different ages. So I don't just get to speak about what suits my skin and you're the professional. So it makes complete sense. So let's tell everybody who doesn't know you and you must start by following her. You're a consultant dermatologist. You're based where? So I am Dr. Adeline Kika. I'm a board certified dermatologist. I am based in Texas. So, and um, when I'm not seeing patients, I'm educating on social media. I go by Brown Skin Derm on literally all my social media platforms. And I think I'm on all social media platforms. But my home is Instagram. That's where you can catch me behaving badly. So um, talking skincare is my passion. I am very, very into educating about skin of color. And um, I'm very big on skin inclusion, making sure that everybody's represented. And I try to do that in terms of discussing medical research, skincare, and so many other things. So I, I absolutely love your feed. And I think it's really educational, but I also think it's really informative and it's quite fun as well, because you manage Thank to you condense know. a lot of information into really easily understandable bite-sized chunks. But what a lot of people don't know probably is what you yourself use in your routine every single day. So. This is 10 out of 10, but let's be honest here. I don't mind if you go way over 10. But oh my you, goodness, thank you so where much. Where do you because... start in terms of how, you've got great skin. How do you look after your skin? Okay, so thank you for telling me I could go over 10 because I just realized I am such a skincare fanatic. It was so hard narrowing everything down to 10. And I always tell my patients, well, keep it simple. You don't need a lot of stuff. So I had to be real with myself today. And I was like, oh, wow, am I really practicing what I'm preaching? <laughs> so this was really, really hard. But I have some extras. And I'll tell you why I have those extras. Now, um, when it comes to skincare, I'll tell you guys, you're going to see more than 10 products. But... The four main things that I stick to, regardless of anything I use in my skincare, sunscreen, topical retinoids, because that's really the gold standard. And when you pair sunscreen and a topical retinoid, I mean, it's just have the battle right there. Then antioxidants like vitamin C and exfoliation. I have to have those four pillars 
in my skincare. Everything else is extra to, you know, these four things that I'm doing. And you're going to see that in my skincare routine. Now, um, prior to lockdown, I was already weaning myself off makeup. So lockdown actually allowed me to just go 100% mostly without foundation. And I think the last time I wore foundation was at a recent uh, filming that I did because they were like, you have to wear foundation. But I don't put so much on my face. I focus on skincare. It's really my foundation. If my skin feels good and healthy, then I don't well, need foundation. You well, then you really do, because genuinely, <laughs> I've looked at your content. I thought you were wearing foundation. You truly do have oh my astonishing God. skin then. It's so good. It's so good. And I have to ask you one quick question, because I champion a lot of high street skincare. You might disagree with me, but do you think that there are some amazing products out there available on the high street that shouldn't break the bank? Do you think good, skin sh good skincare should be affordable? I absolutely believe that. I tell people loyalty to ingredients, not loyalty to brands. That's my thing. Because you can go into your drugstore. Don't sleep on the drugstore products because they're in a drugstore. You know, sometimes I recommend drugstore products to patients. And they're like, uh, it's not fancy enough. And I tell people you would find some of the best skincare products in your drugstore. It doesn't have to break the bank. Now, there's certain items that I like, I would splurge on. Like I splurge on my topical retinoid. I really want to make sure I'm getting the back for my money. <laughs> that one for sure. I sometimes splurge on my vitamin C because I feel like it has to be well formulated because it has to be stable. Now, then there are other things like cleansers and moisturizers. I don't think you need to break the bank to get some of those things. So it really depends. And you're going to see that in, in what I show you today, it's going to range from absolutely below $10 to a little bit more. But at the end of the day, skincare should be accessible. It should be affordable. I totally believe that. Good, good. I'm glad. Well, I'm glad to hear that because I always say, if, if anybody ever says to me, you know so much about skin Kennedy, and I say, I know everything, but I've learned it simply by listening to brilliant dermatologists. So everything that I know, I've learned from amazing people like you. So you basically just ticked all my boxes. That's, that's something I tell <laughs> everybody the whole time. Right, dive straight in, Adeline. Otherwise, we're going to be here until Easter Sunday having too much I fun. I know. So I could have it. a life with you forever. Dive so, straight in. Go on. Okay. I'm going to start with cleansing, right? Because mm -hmm. that's the first part of our routine. We want to prep our skin before we start. Now, I told you guys I don't wear foundation. There are two makeup products, maybe three that I can't go without. I need um, an eyebrow shaper or liner, whatever you want to call it, an eyeliner. I always do dark eyeliner and then lipstick, and that's it. That's all the three things I need. If I was ever stuck in a desert, that's all I want for my makeup. <laughs> So when you do that, you need something to take off the makeup. Micellar water is something I can't leave without in my skincare. And I use this one from Bioderma. It's about $14. I don't know how much it is over in the UK, but I love micellar water. You know, it's very gentle on skin. You, it, I can use it around my eyes and under eye area, especially where it's sensitive. I can use it on my lips to take off makeup. So that is part of my cleanser. What do you think about micellar water? Do you use it, Nadine? I do, I do. And I use it if I'm using uh, waterproof makeup because I just think it has that extra stage. So I would exactly. use that to take off long lasting eye makeup or lips or something like that. And then I would go in with a cleanser, but let's see which cleanser you're going. By the way, that's the original micellar, micellar water, and it's amazing. It's, it's yes, so good. Yes, yes, I love it. Bioderma is like one of my favorite brands for sensitive skincare. If you're listening out there, when a patient has gone through like radiation therapy and they have radiation dermatitis, maybe they're going through breast cancer, that is one of the brands that I tell them to check out in terms of sensitive skin. The Atoderm range? Don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started on Atoderm. I, and I only discovered Bioderma Atoderm because 
um, one of my friends has a daughter and, and uh, she, her daughter is about 11 or 12 and she's really conscious of having really bad eczema and dermatitis. Mm -hmm. It's all in her joints. And, and so the, 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 I know, I know, I know. So the Aetoderm shower oil, I mean, it's a lifesaver. Yeah. Amazing. Yes, you can you, you can't go wrong with um, Bioderma as a, a good sensitive skincare brand that La Roche Posay and the rest. Which also brings me to another one that I love, 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 love. So that is CeraVe. You don't have to break the bank to use most of your products. And this is one of my favorite cleansers from the line. This is the Hydrating Facial Cleanser. And the reason I love the Hydrating Facial Cleanser, again, is gentle. Gentle skincare is not only for sensitive skin. It's for all skin. So please, you guys... You don't, it doesn't have to be abrasive. And I say this because some patients feel like for skincare to work, it has to be tingling, it has to be burning, you have to feel a sensation, but it doesn't always have to be the case. You can go for gentle skincare products. And this is one of my favorites. It's going to cleanse skin without leaving skin, feeling dry or tight or squeaky clean, which is not good, by the way, guys. You don't ever want to cleanse your your skin to squeaky clean. There's nothing like squeaky clean skin. It's a damaged skin barrier when you have that feeling. I absolutely yeah, love that. Maybe. It's still it's it's still my favorite CeraVe cleanser. I absolutely love it. Can I ask a question though, really quickly? Do you like yes. to use a are you cleansing cloth person, a flannel person, or do you not bother? Do you just use your hands? I just use my hands. Okay. It's interesting that you just you mentioned that because people ask me a lot of the time. And the reason I just use my hands is because I am more of a chemical exfoliant type of person. Yeah. Okay. And I feel like if I use that and then use my chemical exfoliant, it's just doing too much. Yeah. So I, I just go for um, exfoliation and I'm using, this is a beauty counter reflect effect. I think this is a new product, but they sent it to me like way, way, way back. And I fell in love with it. It has a nice bouncy texture. So mm -hmm. exfoliation is really, really important to me because once you hit your you hit your thirties and above, look, your skin just takes a, a sweet time. It just doesn't want to do anything anytime soon. You gotta have to like, please, you know, move along. So chemical exfoliation is very important to me. Skin renewal stats slowing down as you hit your mid-20s so you don't have that you know healing process being so fast as it was chemical exfoliation allows your skin to get rid of you know dead skin on clock pores and you know renew and you have fresher cells come up so exfoliation totally important to me and if you have hyperpigmentation you have an issue with hyperpigmentation skin of color you definitely want to exfoliate Give us the name of that product again. Sorry, Adeline. So this is the Beauty Counter Reflect Effect. It has glycolic acid in it. So guys, I know TikTok is busy telling you darker skin types can't use glycolic acid. Hear it from me. Yes, you can. But like any acid, you have to be careful. Everything in moderation. You have to follow the rules and make sure you're doing things the right way. When things go wrong, it's not that it's not meant to be used in darker skin types. It's because you're not using it appropriately. So please, let's stop with the whole rumors that I see on, on TikTok. How often, how often do you use that? And is it a leave-on product? We don't have that, con uh, that product range in the UK. So tell me how you use it and how long you leave it on. Okay, so this is a mask. Okay. Now, with chemical exfoliants, it can come in the form of a toner. It can come in the form of a cleanser. It could come in the form of even, you know, pads that you... You, you, you use on the face. This particular one is a mask that you put on and okay. you leave on for about 10 minutes and you rinse off. It has phytic acid in it, but it also has bamboo particles. So it has a little bit of a physical exfoliant element to it. But the bamboo particles are very soft and it just feels so good on skin and you rinse off and that skin doesn't feel dry or tight. That's what I love about this exfoliant. And I I'm, use it about twice a week. 
I, I'm with you completely. I would prefer my acid as a 10 minute, 15 minute mask and I would probably use it once or twice a week because I'm older than you. I like a lactic acid because it's slightly more gentle. But obviously I'm postmenopausal, so it makes sense. I used to love yes. glycolic when I was your age. Yeah, love lactic glycolic. acid is also good because it helps stimulate natural production of ceramides in your mm -hmm. skin. That's another good reason to use it. So I love that as well. And salicylic acid, I love it especially for acne prone skin. I have acne prone skin, I have oily skin. So you can use whatever exfoliants you want. It's just that this, this is the baby of the moment. It might yeah. switch next week, but this is the exfoliant I'm using. Okay, so after exfoliation, what happens is like you have to replenish the moisture. Moisturization, very, very, very important. So when it comes to moisturization, I don't know if you guys have skin fix in the U.S., but no. What do you guys have in the U.S., baby? In the, in the U.K. In the UK. UK. <clears throat> we have good brands, but trust me, the minute I land in America, I'm straight to the beauty counter. And I'm like, <laughs> so what's special about this skin fix moisturizer? So this one has lots of lipids. It has good peptides. So it moisturizes skin, it, it aids with the skin barrier, and it just feels so good on skin. Now, I always tell people you have to give skincare time to work. You have to use it consistently, regularly, and then by, you know, the eight-week mark, you start seeing things. But moisturizers are one of those products in skincare that you can see the long-term as well as short-term effects. So when you place a moisturizer on skin, you want to feel your, the texture of your skin um, feel different, soft. You want the look to be more radiant. And this is what this moisturizer does for me. So What's I the exact you, name of it? So it's called Skin so Fix. So this is what? a Skin Fix Barrier Triple Lipid Peptide Cream. Triple okay. Lipid Peptide Cream. So okay. those lipids are going to replenish skin's moisture barrier. It's one of the best moisturizers that you can find at Sephora at this moment. So that is Skin Fix. And oh, I, I have some. I do have some gossip for you, Adeline, and everybody out there in the UK. Okay. Sephora are coming. Sephora are coming here in the UK in January. They're opening are their you first serious? store. Yes. Yeah. Wait. You guys have never haven't had a Sephora all this time. We did about 10 years ago and it didn't work out because we have boots here. So it's very okay. unique. But mm -hmm. uh, the first one is opening in West London in January. They're going online first in November or December. And then the first physical store is in January. So there you go. Well, I'm, I'm so happy for you guys. I don't know how you guys have been living for the past 10 years without Sephora. That, that, <laughs> is, that is crazy. Whoa. I know we're all running around super excited. We are, trust me. That is wonderful. And I hope you guys are going to have access to the American brands because that will be really, really great. Yeah, I hope so. I hope both the, the, the really great American brands, but I also hope that we get a lot of the really good Asian brands as well. So like oh, the Korea, yeah. The, yeah, that's and the true. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're like so super advanced in terms of ingredients, especially when it comes to skin um, sunscreen. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, yeah, and the Austra Austra Australia and Asia are so advanced when it comes to sunscreens. It'll be really interesting. Yeah. And also, we don't have the FDA rules in the UK, so I think we will get the Australian and the Korean and the Japanese sunscreens as oh well. Oh, my so. goodness. So now, know, thanks right? for letting me know. It means that when I fly and I, you know, I transit through London, I have to make sure I get all my skincare products before taking off. So that's yeah. a good tip. Thank you. So the next one, I think we talked about this on our Inky Live. We talked about ceramides, did we? Or maybe we didn't. Yeah. No, we, we, I think we did. But ceramides are absolutely, absolutely important in my skincare. And I used one from the Inky. This is the Ceramide Nighttime. Although they say nighttime, you can use this in the AM as well. It's, it's ceramides are not, you know, time specific. And ceramides are good because they're actually like one of the most important um, ingredients that you can use in skin when it comes to your moisture barrier. They help repair the moisture barrier. They help maintain it. 
very very important and you can find ceramides in so many skincare products today but i love this one from the inky because i know that i'm just getting you know my my ceramides at a higher concentration so that's that one do you have any questions nadine anything else no I no on? i'm just loving every single choice i'm literally like as soon as you get off this phone call i'm like I need to discover skin fix. I need to discover beauty counter. But the whole point of these series is to learn about new brands, new experiences, new skin types. I just honestly, yes. I can listen to you speak all day. Just keep going on. Keep going on. Yeah, I, I, love, I love the textures and how these products make me feel, how they look on my skin. So the next one in my facial skin care is skin SkinCeuticals. Do you guys have skin SkinCeuticals? Okay, awesome. Awesome. So, go on. Wh which antioxidant are you going to choose? So, this is the Floritin CF from SkinCeuticals. Yeah. I love, love this one. And the reason why I like the SkinCeutical brands is that it actually works. Yeah. They do have some studies to accompany some of your products. I have, I'm, my skin is very prone to hyperpigmentation. Like I mentioned in the beginning, sunscreen topical retinoids, vitamin C, and exfoliation. And the reason is because I know I'm prone to hyperpigmentation. So those things are absolutely important to me. Now, you don't see any spots on my face. I stay one, two, three steps ahead of my hyperpigmentation. I'm like, I would be treating you before you even pop up on my face. That, that is how I approach my, my skincare. It is very proactive. Sometimes reactive, but we try to make it 90% proactive and then 10% reactive. That is how it should be. So I use vitamin C because it's going to help with discoloration. And it's actually going to boost the effectiveness of your sunscreen. Okay? So that is what I use. I use um, the Floritin CF from SkinCeuticals. Now, and I use the CE for Runic because I'm older and I need a stronger uh, strength of vitamin C, you see? I, I yeah, I've, I've, used, I've used that, but I just feel like for whatever reason, this feels more moisturizing to my skin. It does. It does. You can and you put you know it on and, to, yeah. And I have to say, when I speak to dermatologists and aesthetic doctors, nine times out of 10, if they're under 45, that will be their antioxidant of choice. Without yes. a doubt. You all love it. I love it. it. I love it. Love it really it. works well for my discoloration. Mm -hmm. So... Moving on, very, very important sunscreen. Okay. And the sunscreen that I am using, I think I was introduced to this sunscreen. This is the Unrivaled Sun Serum, SPF of 35 by Venus Williams' 11. Venus Williams, the super tennis player. So she came up with the, the sunscreen serum. Yeah, I just love, I love, love, love this product. And I don't think I was using serum sunscreens until they sent me this product during lockdown. And I tried it and absolutely love it. It has a nice texture. It's very lightweight and it's a mineral sunscreen. I tend to use more mineral sunscreen than other people. Other people like chemical sunscreens. But the reason why I use physical sunscreens is because they tend to be less irritating on skin. As, as you know, yeah, go ahead, Nadine. But, but, but as a black woman, is it not really hard to find a mineral sunscreen that doesn't give you a cast? Yes, that is so true. And that is the dilemma when, when it comes to mineral sunscreens. But this one is one of the things that is special about it. And I'm glad you brought that up because that's one of the reasons I love it. It doesn't leave as much of a white cast. It's very, very minimal. And it fades away, I think, within like 20 minutes, the minimal white cast that you get from it. It is really, really, really good. And you can layer it with other skincare products very easily because it's a serum. Yeah. So definitely, yes. Now, when it comes to mineral sunscreens, if you have sensitive or eczema-prone skin and you are in the U.S., I usually advise physical sunscreens because we don't have many approved filters like Australia and Asia. So I always go for sensitive skin. I tend to, you know, shift towards more, lean towards more physical sunscreen. But remember, the best sunscreen is the one you would use. So if you love chemical sunscreens, 
by all means, do them. The one chemical sunscreen that I use is by a brand called Melee. It's also um, a serum. And it's called the No Shade um, um, Serum Sunscreen by Melee. I, I, I may be forgetting the exact name, but it's another one that I use that I actually love. But if your skin of color, darker skin tones, or just like physical sunscreens that you want to check out this sunscreen by Venus Williams. This is an SPF of 30. And I think about um, the zinc oxide is about 25% in this one. I, I, so love that's I love that you're teaching me about all these new and exciting brands. I absolutely love it. <laughs> no, no, really. And um, I can't stress how important it is for darker skin types to wear sunscreen because there's a lot of misinformation and myths. And, you know, every time I say this, people come at me and I never get tired or um, I never get intimidated about saying this. Why? Because hyperpigmentation is one of our biggest cosmetic or aesthetic issue. One of the main reasons why people would come to see me and be ready to spend anything, literally anything, is on hyperpigmentation. Their skin is prone to melasma and so many other forms of hyperpigmentation. Using sunscreen is half the battle. I always tell my patients, I can put you on the best laser this, you know, best cream this, best whatever. You can spend all the money you want. We can buy the best retinoids. But if you don't like or want to use sunscreen, you're just wasting your time and wasting my time too, basically. You, you know, it's so interesting because I remember doing a live um, actually with a, a woman called Karen Williams. And I said, do you not use an SPF? And she said, well, black girls don't have to wear SPF. And I said, I know traditionally you've been raised thinking that SPF was to protect you from sunburn and skin cancer. But you don't want that aggression every day. You don't want that hyperpigmentation. You don't, I mean, I know you're mm -hmm. not going to get wrinkly in the same way that I am, but you're going to get other issues. Please protect yes. yourself. Just please. I, yes. And it's only it at my age very that I important. appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. So black skin tends <clears throat> to have an SPF, a natural SPF or baseline SPF of about 13, about 13 to 15. However, the recommendation is at least an SPF of 30 and above. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get some baseline protection, but it's not going to be all protective. And I still get dark skin patients that get sunburns, especially when they go on vacations like to mm -hmm. Mexico. And unfortunately, they don't even know that they're having a sunburn. That mm -hmm. is what's the most unfortunate part. They come and see me and they can't even relate their experience of being out under the sun and the blisters on the back or the pain on the back yeah. or the swelling on the back. You don't get the erythema, do you? You don't get yes. the redness. So yeah. Yes, yeah. you can't appreciate the redness as much on darker skin. And for some people, they don't just know. So they sit in the sun, they're feeling the pain, but because they don't know what is going on, they stay in the sun because they don't know that that's what is causing this reaction. So I always tell people sunscreen is for sunburns as well. You can't think about sunscreen only in the context of skin cancers. There are so many other things that, or so many other reasons to use sunscreen. We use it for sun sensitivity. Sometimes you use your topical retinoids. It can make your skin more irritated when you go out under the sun. Sometimes after getting a chemical peel, your cells are so fragile. They're fresh, brand new cells. And you go out under the sun and you get that sunburn or that sun irritation. Some people get sun rashes. You're not immune to that because you're darker skin. And then there are conditions such as lupus, which predominantly affects people of color. And guess what? You have sensitivity to the sun. So we have to use the sunscreen. And I'm saying all this because I'm trying to get it out to you guys because all this information is very, very important. So uh, somebody, so, somebody asked the question when you mentioned both the serum sunscreens, which I will I'll put them both in because you really like them. Is it possible to get enough coverage with a serum sunscreen because it is thinner? Is it, can you still do the right amount to get the two micrograms per square centimeter that you need? Yes. So with this one, I actually, you should always put half a teaspoon. And I okay. actually have my little like baking teaspoon that I use for sunscreen. If I knew, I would have showed you guys. I have it in my drawer in my restroom and I use it for like creams and serums, I always measure it because how else would you know? Sometimes you can't do the two finger rule on this. It's just gonna like, you know, run, run off. off. Yeah, 
I think when I, I tested the Venus Williams one, I think you would need about eight of the dropper on, on okay. the palm of your hand. And that's what I do. I just drop it about eight times or so. And I think that's about half a, half a teaspoon to the face. And I put it on. It actually okay. spreads really, really well. It's not greasy. And I feel more comfortable even using it. However, I do use creams. I do use lotion, sunscreens. It's just I'm showing you this today. I actually have a stash, a whole cabinet of sunscreen that I, I mean, from sprays to sticks, I could, I could talk about sunscreens all day. So find I one that works for you. Yes. I love the idea. Of, I love the idea of a serum sunscreen. And I actually think if you can get a serum sunscreen and then put, you know, sunscreen with your moisturizer on top or with your foundation on top, I just think the more the merrier. And I, and I yes. was actually really old when I, I was really old when I started using sunscreen. I grew up in the 60s and 70s. We didn't even use sunscreens. But if mm -hmm. you start investing in good skincare and you don't invest in an SPF, you're just, what's, there's literally no point. You know, you're just, you're giving with one hand and taking away with the other. It makes yes, sense. Yes, exactly. When people ask me about anti-aging skincare, I tell them, especially if you're darker skin, yes, you are going to manifest um, wrinkles 10 years later than Caucasian skin, but you're still going to get something. It's, it's not forever. No, it's true. So, and so somebody, Posh Interior, just said, I need a mineral sunscreen that isn't going to make me look like a ghost. Do you have a post no. on, your, on your feed that gives your favorite so mineral I, sunscreens? Yes, exactly. I do something called brown skin friendly sunscreen reviews. Good. So if you go on my page, especially on my reels, and these are all videos, and I show you the before and the after, and I have a rating system from pricing to cosmesis of how it looks on my skin. You can find all those ratings there on my page. And I think it's on the highlight if you just want to see only the sunscreen reviews. So I, I mean, I, I know the struggle and I made sure I provided that information. It's on my page. Thank you, brilliant. Right, what, where do you want You're to go so to You're so welcome. Okay, next, next, we've talked about sunscreen. Another thing I want to talk about is this. I don't know if you guys have Aven or La Roche-Posay in the we UK. Do. Okay, yeah. awesome. So this is mineral spring water. Okay. I, I don't see people talk about this a lot on social media, although I do see it here and there. But it's one of my favorite things to use on my skin. I would usually use this after cleansing my skin Last time we talked about hyaluronic acid and how important it is to apply it on moist skin. I know me, I get easily distracted. I step out of the shower, I finish like cleansing my face and somebody calls me and there I go and I'm talking and I totally forget to put like my moisturizer. I'm not done with my skincare routine and what happens is my skin gets dry because I've lost that moisture right? So I just don't want to go back and put my hyaluronic acid, you know, pick up where I left off. So I always start by misting. I love, love misting. And that's a way for me to add moisture onto my skin. And then another good thing about thermal spring water, whether you're using the one from Aven or whether you're using the one from La Roche-Posay, thermal spring water has trace mineral trace elements that help replenish skin's microbiome. Our microbiome is a, our community of healthy microbes that helps defend us against the external environment. Our microbiome is as unique as, as our DNA, meaning that if someone was to test my microbiome and test yours, it would totally be different. Mm -hmm. So our microbiome is very important because we found out that people who have an unbalanced microbiome, a disturbed microbiome, um, tend to have conditions or um, tend to, it tends to be associated with more irritation. We see that in conditions such as rosacea, psoriasis, acne, the microbiome is actually affected. So replenishing, rebalancing, sustaining our microbiome is very important. And how do we do that? We have to give our microbiome, the food it needs. And this is where this trace mineral elements like selenium, things that 
these microbes, this health, this community of healthy microbes can thrive on. We have to moisturize our skin. And if you've heard before the concept of prebiotic skincare, that is what we're talking about. Just like you take yogurt to help with your gut bacteria, the idea with prebiotic skincare is that you use skincare that feeds the microbiome, our community of healthy microbes. So if you've ever heard the word prebiotic skincare, that is where the conversation is trending to. I don't know if you, uh, you've, you've heard about prebiotic skincare. Yeah, yeah there, there's, a, there's a big buzz with pre and probiotic, or, although obviously yes. they're probiotic firm and skincare in the UK. Um, and I think the, the, for me, the most exciting research is done with sensitive skin conditions. So mm -hmm. eczema, psoriasis, there's this unbalance, isn't there, of this yes. the, the skin's biome. And then obviously yes. they think it might be related to uh, rosacea and acne as well. I think it's absolutely fascinating. What I didn't know was that mineral spring water helps balance your microbiome. So that, that Yes, yes, it today. does. And La Roche-Posay has done like research on it and yeah. it's shown that using um, spring water has actually helped in conditions such as atopic dermatitis or eczema and rosacea and other, other conditions. So very, very important. That's why I use it. It's not really only about, you know, adding moisture to my skin. I'm using it because I know what's in it. I know it calms the skin. It rebalances my pH, gets it to a more neutral or more acidic pH, which is where we want our skin. So that's why I use it. It's very important to me. I travel with it. I use it on a plane. I use it in the hotels. I always have one with me. So I hope you learned something. I'm not done. I'm not I, done. I am. Uh, every day is a lesson with you, Adeline. I love it. <laughs> okay. Now, 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 let's talk about a little bit about slugging, right? Everybody wants to slug. It's, it's the trending thing. Well, I love doing it too. I love doing it and I encourage people to do it the right way. When, if you're going to slug, make sure you moisturize your skin because you're going to add something like petroleum jelly. In my case, I love this nice balm by Vaseline. The idea is you want your skin to be clean before you do any kind of slugging, okay? And you want to use a moisturizer to seal this in with the petroleum jelly. And I love this one because it's very, very light. You can use the one from the jar, but this one, I feel like it just goes on so smoothly. So that's what I use on my skin after moisturizing, especially at night, and especially after using my topical retinoid, I would slug with this. You literally answered my questions there. I'm saying, are you a slugger after retinoids? Because we're gonna get onto the whole topic of retinoids. Loads of people have been asking. Do you feel it softens the effect or it eases the side effects of using maybe a retinoid or a tret or something like that? What do you think? Okay, so I am layering mine on top of the topical retinoid. So okay. I'm sandwiching, it's, it's on top of the topical retinoid. I don't put this first before no. I put the topical retinoid. Now, but do you, do you feel cases, like... It I feel like it minimizes the irritation okay. and it can be like a way to have a controlled release of the, mm -hmm. or a controlled absorption of the topical retinoid. You're still going to get mm -hmm. that efficacy. I don't think it's going to weaken the, to the topical retinoid yeah. any. It's just that it's going to allow it to penetrate a little bit more slower, especially if you're, putting this on. Remember, this is petroleum jelly, right? It's an occlusive um, ingredient, right? Now, if, you if you're trying to select a topical retinoid, you want to look for encapsulated topical retinoids. Why? Because the manufacturer in the, in the formulation of it, they've already um, taken into um, uh, consideration the slow release of the topical retinoid so you don't get as much irritation. But say, let's say you are not using an encapsulated retinol, right? Or even a prescription retinoid for that matter. Then I would tell you to layer on some moisturizer, maybe put on just a little bit of pea jelly before you layer on the prescription strength or the high potency retinoid. Why? Because it's just not going to 
um, absorb into skin as fat. So you have a more controlled release. Yeah. But I prefer layering this on top because I don't want something that's too occlusive that is going to, you know, prevent me really absorbing my topical retinoid. So for everybody asking there, slugging is the practice of putting your actives on your skin at night, your hydrators, it could be vitamins, but most often it's retinols, vitamin A derivatives. And then you seal it in with an occlusive, most normally some sort of form of petroleum jelly. And then what that yes. does is seal in the top and then no water can hydrate, can leave your skin. So you get no transepidermal water loss overnight. So you get mm -hmm. super hydrated, super active ingredients on your skin. That's all that slugging is. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. In, in, in the basic sense of it, that's what slugging is. Yeah. And you don't only have to use um, petroleum jelly. The same idea applies to oils. People ask me about facial oils all the time. It's the same idea because all you're just doing is putting an occlusive agent over. What oils so, do you like? So I love squalene. Yeah, because yeah. it doesn't, it's non comedogenic. Number one, it's not going to mm -hmm. um, occlude my pores. The same way petroleum jelly is non comedogenic. Many people are on TikTok, they will say, oh my goodness, break out petroleum jelly, you're close. But the particle size is so large. run into an issue yeah. with 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 slogging is when you have acne prone skin and you have um, excess sebum production now if you go put in this occlusive ingredient over it you risk trapping the excess oil in the pores and guess what you can break out your acne Oh, I'm, I'm losing you slightly. Can you hear me? Yeah. The internet gods are acting up. I know. I know. Please. Keep going. I, you're, you're coming in and out. I'm hoping that everybody can hear you. Can you still hear Dr. Adeline, everybody? You're lagging. Okay, yeah, can you hear me now? Is, is it all better? You're better now, yeah. Okay, so I was just saying, if you have acne-prone skin, if you have acne-prone skin, just be careful with your pea jelly because you might be yeah. trapping excess okay. oil and dirt and that may lead to breakouts. So you want to make sure you cleanse your face before you use your pea jelly. Okay. Uh, uh, talking, of reti okay. talking of retinoids. Next uh, thing, are you guys getting me, me all right? Clear. Uh, are you? Yeah, I think I think you're you're catting out slightly, but not too badly. Um, do you personally use prescription retinoids? And now you really have frozen. Oh, I don't want to lose this. We need to stay on long enough to do your retinoids. That's super important. Okay, Nadine, let me log out and log back in. You sure? Okay, all right. Yes. Okay. So Adeline is going to log out and then log back in. And she has to come back in because we have, she's a dermatologist. She's a consultant dermatologist. We have to, have to, have to. We have to get her retinoids, right? I presume she uses prescription. I'm going to invite her back in again uh, because... Um, Let's have a look. There you are. I'm just going to invite her back in to make it easy for her. There you go. I've invited her. Um, I'm just going to invite her back in to make it easier for her. We have to get her prescription retinoids or even her over-the-counter retinoids because nobody knows a retinol like a dermatologist. They know them brilliantly. I've invited you back in, Adeline. Try and join us again. It's pretty bad. She is great, isn't she? I knew you'd like her. So what you would recommend for acne prone skin is squalene. So you slug with squalene because squalene is non-comedogenic. However, 
whatever you use to slug, what she was actually saying was you do risk the chance if you've got oily skin of trapping your own sebum back into your skin. So if you overproduce sebum, especially as you sleep, and then you trap your skin with say a squalene or a pea jelly, petroleum jelly, then you risk trapping your own sebum. So it's not actually the squalene or the petroleum jelly that's causing the breakouts, it's your own sebum. So I suggest that slugging probably isn't gonna work for people who suffer from breakouts really badly, but it definitely works for drier skin. Um, drier skin, anybody that's having irritation from retinol. Can you come back in, Adeline? Oh, she's unable to join me now. Hold on. Try again, try again. I'm going to invite her back in. I've invited you back in. There should be a little jump when she can join in. You can tell when somebody's joining. She is brilliant, isn't she? She was really good on the Inky Live. I really like her. Let me see if she's invited to come in. Oh, there you go. I'm accepting you back in. Try that. This is a great conversation. It is a great conversation. I'm accepting you. I'm accepting you. This is what happens when you, you rely on technology just before everybody breaks up for Easter. You break down. I think we're doing quite well, seeing as London is speaking all the way to Texas. That's not too bad, is it? I'm here. I know you're there. Right. I'm trying to accept you and invite you at the same time. Oh, she's unable to join. That's so strange. Right. Right. I've invited you again. Try again. Fingers crossed. There okay, you are. I wasn't sure if it was where I was, so I just switched positions. You look okay. even more gorgeous in that light. Can I just say? Oh, thank I, you. I was saying, I literally was just basically saying, explaining what you were saying about slugging while you were off and why it, it wouldn't necessarily work for people who have very oily skin. But mm -hmm. before. So, yeah, recap. Go on. Slugging is wonderful. If you have super oily skin or acne prone skin, be careful. Okay. It, pea, pea jelly is non comedogenic, right? However, if you have excess sebum production, uh, you can trap that excess sebum in the pores when you put an occlusive agent like pea jelly. So you want to be careful because if you have acne, this could make your acne worse. And then if you're a person that is not good at cleansing your skin of makeup before you go to bed, please don't go slugging because you're just trapping dirt makeup underneath there. And that's not great either. So we have to slug in a much more responsible way. Uh, on to your retinols, retinoids. I'm fascinated. And this is the one thing I said, we have to get her back because she's going to know more about retinol than anybody else. And I'm fascinated if you're using an over-the-counter one, if you're using a retinol, retinal, or if you are a pure prescription girl, what are you? So I am in my 30s. I have to play with the big boys because we don't have time to waste. So, <laughs> so you're a dermatologist. I would be disappointed if you didn't say that. <laughs> Look, I roll with the big dogs when it comes to my topical retinoids. I use a prescription strength retin-A. However, okay. however, I do alternate it with a retinol. And I am happy that you mentioned um, topical retinoids because, and, and that you mentioned the retinol because people always say retinol and they're not even aware that there's levels to this, right? There are levels. Let me explain it in the simplest of ways, okay? You have retinol esters, you have retinol, you have retinol, and you have retinoic acid. Retinoic acid is the prescription one that you get from your dermatologist, and it works faster. Why? Because it's already in its most active form, okay? Now, retinaldehyde is the step before retinoic acid meaning that is, you know, you convert it directly. It doesn't have to go through multiple steps to become its most active form. Now, that's why I use this one from Medic 8. This one is the Crystal Retinal 6. 
And the reason why we go from retinol, esters, retinol, retinol, and then, you know, retinoic acid is because the higher you go in potency and strength, the more irritation you get from the product. So it makes sense why many over-the-counter retinoids are retinol because the manufacturer doesn't want you calling them every day, telling them you're peeling. You're, they just want you to have something that is going to be effective over the long run without as much irritation, right? But if you're like me and you start seeing those fine lines popping up and things are, you know, falling here and there, you just want the most active form. A little, you want your results a little bit quicker. That's why you use a prescription retinoid or you use something like the retinaldehyde from uh, Medic Aid or even Aven. And I like them because this one in particular from Medic Aid, I don't know if you have the brand over there, but it's an English one... brand, Adeline. Oh, really? Medic Aid is English. Come over and go around the labs with us. Do you know how I, I was introduced to Medic Aid by Netta Porter? So yeah. I did a live with them and I had, I, I got the chance to try some of the products and this was one of the ones that was sent to me, but I thought it was a US brand. I had no idea it was actually. We're incredibly yeah, so proud this, of it, Adeline. We're incredibly oh, proud of it. Oh, this is, this is a wonderful topical retinoid. It's soft and buttery on skin. It already comes with your hyaluronic acid and glycerin. That's what I love about this formulation. So I always tell people, have some hyaluronic acid, have some ceramides, have some glycerin to go with your topical retinoid. So I was so happy that they included this in the formulation of the topical retinoid. So this one is a retinaldehyde, a retinal, okay? It's not a retinol. So if you're like me in your 30s, but you don't want to go in to see the derm or you're not going to use prescription strength anytime soon, but you want something stronger than your retinol, then hey, why don't you start with the retinal or retinaldehyde? Yeah. What do you think, Lady? Do you use retinaldehydes? Do you roll with prescription? I what do. do, you do? I've, tr I've tried to do prescription um, trek, and I have tried on the lowest prescription possible. But for me, because I spend so much time in front of the camera, it just I, it's very hard for me to get over that peeling mm -hmm. pilling phase. So I just do strongest retinol retinaldehyde i can do and i just do slow and steady wins the race every single night and i absolutely okay let love me them. let me give you let me give you a, a big a tip here okay because this is actually backed by um clinical research use your prescription retinoid or your retinaldehyde whichever one is most irritating to you use it like a mask so you're going to cleanse your face you're going to add some hyaluronic acid to it and then you're going to apply the product like a yeah. dime size amount, a good size amount, and leave it on skin for about 15 minutes, even 10 to 15 minutes. While you go about whatever you do and you rinse off and studies show that you will still have the same effectiveness doing it that way. It's called the short contact retinoid method. So I'm, it I'm really, taking really notes works. As, we speak, yes. as you speak, I love Yes, because I have patients that, you know, tell me like they really want to use a prescription strength one, but they can't. So that's what you can do. You can do with any topical retinoid prescription strength. I mostly advise my patients to do that with prescription strength because I know that it can be really strong. And they're like, but we want to use our topical retinoid. I say, you can use your topical retinoid. You just have to change the way you're using the topical retinoid. Use it like and a mask. You, and how many times a week? You, to me, if you're going to do the shot contact method, I don't mind if you do it every other day or sometimes even daily. It doesn't okay. matter to me because it's not staying on. It stays there. And then, you know, you rinse it up and you proceed with your moisturizer. I love you. <laughs> I'm going to try you're it. Welcome. I'm going to try it. I love, I I love skincare. Back. I, I can talk you. about skincare. You all day every day so don't even get me started listen when i was first introducing you i said look i feel like i know you i feel like we're friends i feel like if we got together we'd have so much fun over i know but it's just I literally for you when i come to england please do please do and also i'll introduce you to the guys that own medicaid but also can i just say 
poor Mark couldn't get a word in edgeways. We were having so much fun all the time. Oh, no, that was such a blast. I can't wait to do it again. Any other products? So I don't want to leave here without talking about body skincare. Good. To me, that is like one of the trending areas of where the, the, where the skincare is going today as far as the industry. Absolutely. We've totally dominated the face. And now we're looking for new territory and body skincare is exploding. Everybody's coming out with body washes, body moisturizers, body this and body that. All of a sudden, we remember that we have skin elsewhere. And that's wonderful. I'm a dermatologist. I'm, I'm all for that. So when it comes to body skincare, I have lots of patients that hit me up, even followers that, you know, are breaking out on their body. They have acne on the body. They have dark spots and blemishes on the body. They're worried about, you know, wrinkling in the neck area, in the chest, saggy skin, crappy skin. So I tell them the same thing I advise on, on the face. Exfoliation is very, very important. So this is one of my favorite exfoliants for the body. This is necessary. I don't know if you guys have it, but it's a body exfoliator. It has a lactic, glycolic, and salicylic acid as well as I think charcoal particles. So it has, it's a physical and chemical exfoliant in one. Okay. And you yeah, can it, use it all over your body. That launched here, I think earlier this year. So it's a new range to the UK and it's oh, had really? really positive results. Yeah, yeah. Yes, this is one of my favorite products on the necessary line, this body exfoliator. I mean, I use it all the time. It's one of my go-to, um, um, body washes so you could find other ones New yeah go ahead no i was going to say do, do, are you a fan of leave on active body products so would you for example use a lactic acid body lotion or maybe a retinol body lotion i am i am a big fan i actually love am lactin which is a lactic acid based moisturizer you love it. I Amlactin? love Amlactin. I we love can't, it. We, we can't get it, but I always buy it when I'm in the States. I love it. I love it. Yes. Yeah. So look for a body moisturizer with lactic acid if you're over there in the US, uh, in the UK. If there's a brand that has it, it is wonderful. If you have body acne, it's one of my favorite ones for body acne or body blemishes, like those dark spots. This is another good one. This one is by Good Molecules. I don't know if you guys have it in the UK. Okay. Yeah, this is the discoloration correcting body treatment. And I think it has niacinamide and tranexamic acid in it. This is more of a leave on product. So for dark spots or blemishes on the body, you want a good exfoliant to use when you take a shower. But having a leave on body moisturizer or body cream you can put it's actually, it's, it's wonderful. You could go to bed with it and it's going to target discoloration. Niacinamide is wonderful. It's gentle on skin. It's calming on skin and it fades dark spots. It actually helps stimulate collagen and elastin so you can get some firming from it as well. So, I love that. yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And then you could also use their, their, their body lotions that have topical retinoids in them. And then there are ones that even have salicylic acid. So there are all those ones or peptides, like one I think is from Biosense. They have like a peptide body moisturizer. Look, what is good for the face certainly could be good for the body. It's, you, you know, it's so true. I always say be as demanding of, of your body products in terms of actives as you are of mm -hmm. your face products because it's not like skin finishes here. You no, know, it does. You get older as well, and you start getting little wrinkly elbows, and little wrinkly knees, and little crepey bits here. I'm like, why haven't we been putting retinol? And it's yes, 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 yep. yes, yes, Doctor Adeline, yes, exactly. <laughs> that was just brilliant. I cannot thank you enough. Please, thank everybody, you. go and follow the amazing brown skin derm. She is all about skin inclusivity, but trust me. Every skin needs to follow a really good clinical dermatologist Aww, of every age, you. of every tone, of every type. She's amazing. She's informative. She's fun. She's interesting. She's interactive. She's just the dream person to follow. She really is. And 
if they dare tag you and you have the time, might you come on and answer some of their questions? Of course, of yeah. course. Yeah. I yeah. actually okay. reply, I do video replies to comments. So if you have, because I figure like if one person has a question, many other people have the same question and it's just easy to reply to that. So feel free to actually put it under a comment and your, your question doesn't have to even relate to the post that you're posting the question on, but having it there so that I can answer and other people can read it is way better than even sending me a DM. Just put it out there and, you know, if you're not asking a, so much of a private question, put it there. It doesn't matter the topic of the post. Put your comments. I read every single comment and um, I'll be glad to respond to it. Like, Nadine, this has been so much fun. I just love talking skincare with you. I love how open-minded you are, how knowledgeable you are, and how you break down the information and you communicate it to your audience. This is wonderful. I would forever remember Mark for introducing me to you. <laughs> so, promise me the minute you land in London, I'm gonna, we'll go out with Mark, obviously, and we'll go, Aww, he's, de course. he's desperate to do karaoke. He's desperate to do karaoke, but I'll also introduce you to Dan Isaacs, who's the founder of Medicaid as well. And they're not far from me. We can go up there for the day, put some lab coats oh, on wow. and make our own retinols, yeah? Tell him it's a lovely, lovely product. I love the mm. texture. It's a texture to me. I like my products to feel good because skincare mm -hmm. is self-care. I want to luxuriate in it. I want to have the entire experience when I use a skincare product. And that was the first thing I noticed about that topical retinoid i'm like this feels really really good thank you so much have the best easter i shall list every product down below of course i'm going to send save this so you can come back time and time again but you need to follow her because she's where it's at really on instagram thanks guys and all the products all my favorite products are actually oh, on yeah. um linked in my bio so yeah. You can go there and I've broken it down by category and you can see what I like for different stuff as well. Yeah, she makes it easy. She makes learning about skincare easy, affordable, but also fun. So thank you so much, Adeline. Have the best Maybe that we don't, can. Don't forget to send me all what you use for your hair because we didn't talk about this today, but you know I'm super obsessed with your Jennifer Aniston <laughs> hair. So I need all the details on that don't think i've forgotten i'll dm you lots of love bye bye bye